Morgan with Eye Health too, visiting with Dr. Cheryl Selman. And today we're going to talk about bone health, the myths and misinformation about bone health. Could you address that, please, Doctor? I'd love to talk about that because Good. it's a really important subject. Well, we do have a problem with bone loss, and mm -hmm. um, it's you know, bone loss itself is not the problem, but what is really the problem is that when you have bone loss and osteoporosis sets in, you tend to have the fractures. And you, you tend to do that when you're older, mm -hmm. although it's happening to younger and younger people, but when you have a fracture when you're older and then you're put into a nursing home and you, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 you actually die very quickly at that point. So um, it, that's really the serious problem with osteoporosis is the risk of fractures that it causes. But the myths are this. Okay. Um, there are cultures around the world that we should learn from because in these cultures such as uh, in Africa and in, in South America, even in Asia, mm -hmm. uh, the older people get, they do not have accompanying loss of bone. And mass. these other cultures that you, you just mentioned, yes, they do not have this bone loss. And well, they either do not have bone loss or they have some bone loss but do not have risk of fractures. Okay. Because you can, our body actually has an ability, it's like there's a reserve within us. We can lose up to 50% of bone mass mm -hmm. and never have a fracture. And if our body is healthy, because bone is living tissue, it's not just this solid thing, mm -hmm. it's living tissue that's being replaced on an ongoing basis, we actually can have uh, you know sig significant bone loss and yet the tissue is healthy and we still have strong bones we have flexible bones so there's something more going on that's putting us at risk of fracture and uh, and the body does allow us to have certain amount of bone loss and not ever have to worry about fractures well that's an important distinction very important I think it is and what we need to understand that bone is a reflection of our overall health hmm okay, okay. So if we are healthy, if we are eating well, if we're absorbing and assimilating our nutrition, if we have uh, healthy function of our adrenal glands, for instance, mm -hmm. if we uh, have proper lifestyle and some exercise, we're able to maintain healthy bones at any age. I have an 86-year-old aunt who has totally healthy bones mm -hmm. and shows no sign of any loss. That's what's possible. You know, that should be the norm. So we need to understand, well, why do we have bone loss and what is going on in regards to bone loss? And um, primarily it's due to nutritional deficiencies. So we're not getting the proper vitamins and minerals and essential, fatty, uh, essential fatty acids. Okay. It has to do with the fact that we become very acidic. So mm. the more acidic we are, the more our pH is out of balance, the more the body in its wisdom will rob calcium from the bones because calcium helps to alkaline the body. So the bones are kind of a major storehouse of calcium that is used to maintain a proper acid alkaline balance in the body. Yes, I mean the body will leach calcium right out of the skeletal system, right? Right. To neutralize the excess acid and we're very acidic in this country. And we're very acidic. Another issue is poor digestion. Mm. So as we get older, we make less stomach acid, we make less digestive enzymes. If we've had a you know, couple of courses of antibiotics or steroids or birth control pills, we upset our gut flora, which compromise our ability to digest and assimilate. So when our digestion gets compromised, we can be eating the best food, but we will not be able to absorb and assimilate those nutrients. So, And what should we do about that? Well, what we need to be doing to support our digestive system is uh, taking digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be taking some good hydrochloric acid, which supports ah. our own stomach acid, which after the age of 35, we actually start reducing the production of these oh, digestive right. supports, you know, the, the enzymes and the hydrochloric acid. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone should be taking a good probiotic because there's mm -hmm. so many things, just toxins in our environment and stress that diminish our good gut flora, and our good gut flora are responsible for our ability to absorb the nutrients that we take in, and, and I have to say that our good gut flora uh, comprises 70% of our immune system as well. So we want to really make sure we take in good probiotics. Okay, so that's, that affects 
bone health. Yes. So all these things affect bone health. Um, we also need to look at some of the uh, further misinformation. So there's a strong belief out there that vitamin C, uh, vitamin, I'm sorry, calcium is required for mm -hmm. bone health. Right. So people are just taking tons of calcium. But in actual fact, we have 18 key bone building nutrients. And unless we get all of those key bone building nutrients, the body will not be able to create healthy bone. And some of those key nutrients include magnesium and mm -hmm. manganese and vitamin D and essential fatty acids and boron and mm -hmm. uh, vitamin K. Yes. We need a range of nutrients. And if we take calcium on its own without the synergistic other nutrients, we actually will never allow the calcium to make it into the bones. So the calcium will go into the joints as crystals. It will cause calcification, perhaps oh. in the breast, behind, behind, perhaps in our arteries, okay. perhaps in our eyes. It will, bone spurs are a sign of this calcification that occurs. So too much calcium on its own, I never recommend women just taking calcium. Well, there's a myth right there that you just Right dispelled. there. I mean, that was created to you know, support an industry that has continued to you know, really be based on a myth that can be quite harmful. And if you take calcium and are on hormones, hmm. then the hormones will accelerate the calcification into the tissues. Well, that's really alarming, but thank you for the good advice, Dr. Selman. <laughs> You're welcome.